I'm joined now by General Manager of Football Operations, Dyson Baker. And, and Dice, it's been such a long layoff between seasons and between kicks. What's in store for EFNL footy fans in 2021? I think it's going to be a big year. Obviously, it'll be uh, a bit more meat and potatoes than what we've seen in yeah. previous years, given um, the, the struggles that clubs and the league have gone through in the past 18 months. But um, from our perspective, we're just uh, excited about getting footy back up and running and you know we've already seen plenty of practice matches that have gone uh, extremely well yeah. uh, and actually been quite well attended but yep. yeah we can't wait to get to that uh, April 10th, April 11th date. Absolutely. Uh, how have the numbers been off the back of 2020 being a no season? I, I, I think people could think it could go two ways, either people drop off or the other way that people actually get you know, the, the hunger back for footy, how, how have the numbers been from your end? Yeah, we'll, we'll remain pretty con pretty consistent across yep. the senior grades. Um, so we'll be slightly up in, in women's um, and also in the under 19s, we'll have uh, about half a dozen, maybe more um, more clubs that will will field second sides. Yep. Um, so that's created a bit of a fixturing yeah. uh, and juggling <laughs> act, but at the same time, it means that there's more kids playing yeah. footy, which is really exciting. So. Um, yeah, we're really pumped about that. Obviously, um, you know the inclusion of uh, of the women's vets competition for this year. So there's um, a couple of a couple of extra sides there, and uh, we've created a merged entity between uh, ourselves and the uh, VAFA for yeah. for a few extra uh, veterans teams as well. Awesome. So plenty plenty going on, and um, yeah, plenty of footy. At the other end of the senior football spectrum, under 19 football, as you mentioned, we've had a few new teams added. There's also been an allowance to allow guys who would have missed out on their top top age year last year to, to play again? Yeah, yeah, we, we saw, I suppose, a gap where, where in the past we've had the development permits um, to allow those those under 20s players to, to play back in the under 19s. And, um, you know, we feel like that's been a really positive shift this year. Um, and we'll continue to, to have a look at exactly how that looks um, in the years moving forward, that sort of age group gap. Um, we know it's a difficult time, that transition year between sort of 15s and 19s, and same in the women's as well. but. Um, yeah, that's something we'll continue to look at over season 2021. Absolutely. And then obviously you're a man, as I said, uh, or as I've said many times, that, you know, be filling almost every role in the FNL's history. You, you keep a watchful eye on on the scores and so on. What, what's your predictions um, for us this year? What's something you think people, you know, aren't going to expect? Funnily enough, um, I reckon division, you know, we've seen in the past couple of seasons, uh, Division 1, Division 2 have been... Yeah. Been our nice tight divisions. I think Division Three yeah, um, will go that way again this year. Um, I'd expect that you know, Park Orchards would be pretty strong yeah. in Division One. Um, Division Two becomes an interesting one oh. again. I think doing predictions, I've probably got five or six sides making a fourteen mm -hmm. final series, yeah. um, and then the other two, <laughs> yeah. the other two got are hard to leave out as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I'm hopeful that uh, yeah it'll be a pretty close across the board. Um, and then I mean the unknown quantity is obviously. Berwick coming into Premier Division, um, exactly what they're going to give. Um, we've seen a couple of uh, matched up practice matches, so we've got a guide of yeah. where they're at. But that's <laughs> that never it. works. Yeah, that's that about works. it until round one, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately. Awesome. Thanks for joining me, Dice, and uh, yeah, see you at the footy. No worries, thanks. Fox with uh, Luke Sheets around the ball here, making big the pass. Oh, over Shetcher! Huge play by Shetcher! Just two big men. And then the shot to three! Now joining me at the desk is Junior Football Manager Corey Maynard. Corey, it's been an all guns blazing start to your EFNL career, mate. Only been in the role two months and it's all happening. How have you enjoyed it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was talking to some people at the Junior Delegates meeting last night and I was saying if I could survive this couple yeah. of months, then I could survive <laughs> anything. So it's definitely been a, um, a hot start to the role, but um, no, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, staff have been great. Um, everyone getting me kind of up to speed and quickly. So yeah, hit the ground running, but um, excited to get the season underway. You speak about the junior delegates there, mate. How have the clubs been? Obviously it's a action packed time, not only for ourselves here in the office, but for clubs getting back into the swing of things after you're off, how have they been? Yeah, clubs have been great. Obviously uh, registrations are a little bit down yep. um, statewide, nationwide, um, after you know feeling the effects of COVID, but 
there's a massive focus um, from AFL Victoria and from us at the FNL to, to just get kids back playing footy. So we just want kids back on the park um, yeah. <laughs> sooner rather than later because we know it's been a massive layoff um, yeah. and they're eager to get back out. So clubs have been good and, and there seems to be a really good understanding um, around around that being the main goal. Yeah, exactly. And obviously, like you said, nationwide, it's a bit low. How would you consider the EFNL compared to other parts of the state and country? Yeah, it's going over the numbers. We've probably, COVID's probably set us back maybe two or three years. Yeah. Um, just in terms of registration numbers, um, in terms of individually and, and, and teams nominated. So uh, we've, we've implemented some rules at the EFNL to allow more teams to get up this yeah. year. Um, so just 16 a side, um, that's really benefited clubs. Um, so I think uh, in 2019, we were sitting at about 420 teams nominated yep. and we're sitting at about 380 right now. So looking at a net loss of about 40 teams, which yep. you know isn't ideal, but given we're coming off the back of 2020, yeah, um, exactly. we're actually not too, um, not too displeased with, with that. So it's, it's actually not a bad result. Absolutely, mate. And then finally, what are you most looking forward to about 2021 and the new role, you know? Is it about just getting out and watching some junior footy or yeah, exactly. just getting a season away? No, exactly right. Like I said before, it's just about kids playing footy. So, you know, a lot of sitting at home uh, in front of a yeah, screen exactly in 2020 right. for everyone. So, no, I'm just like everybody else. I'm really excited to see kids and families back out at the local footy and, and getting them thanks to their local community again and um, building some spirit and some confidence back up in in footy because that's what it's all about. So no, just really excited to see the kids, boys and girls, um, back playing footy. My best friend's always later, she just moves with the weather. Regardless of the day come, we just take it together. Now joining me, ladies and gentlemen of the East, is the commercial manager of the EFNL for, for almost, well, forever, Mark Freeman. <laughs> Freeze. Um, it's been a, a big year, or 2020 was a massive year for not just us, but the, the whole economy. Given the economic climate of 2020, how grateful have we been for all our uh, sponsors that have managed to hang around and, and help us through that tricky period? Oh, it's been absolutely fantastic that they have been able to, uh, to stay with us. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, Obviously, economically, it's been a challenging year yeah. for all businesses. Um, strangely enough, our, our clubs um, were able to successfully navigate through through yeah. that tricky times financially and through the support of their sponsor, their sponsors that, that have been around for a long time. Yeah. And similarly, obviously, ours have done the same thing for us. So, yeah, um, we're internally grateful for uh, for their support. That's uh, for sure. Absolutely, they've all been fantastic, and hopefully we can do our bit to, to thank them in 2021. Yep. But we've also actually now as well, moving into 2021, managed to add on a few new partners, such, such as our strength. Uh, give us a little bit of a rundown of, of who's coming on board this year. Yeah, sure. Um, we actually see the return of CUB uh, coming back on board, so we didn't have them in uh, in 2020, or what? 2019. What was, yeah, yeah, 2019. Um, so they, they're coming back on board and providing a, a great support for our clubs in yep. terms of online ordering um, and very competitive pricing and um, competing delivery times and all those sort of things. Yep. So um, something that's going to be coming out to the clubs very soon is... And making it, their lives easier. Absolutely. Um, we know uh, how painful it can be to <laughs> chasing specials and, exactly. uh, and all those sort of things. So, uh, yeah, this is certainly going to be nice and, and easy for them. So we encourage all the clubs to jump on board with that. We certainly acknowledge that clubs obviously have existing sponsorship arrangements yep. with with supermarkets or, or pubs or whatever the case may be, We're not encouraging them to break those, just basically encouraging the clubs that don't yeah, to, um, have a look at it. to have a look at this and, and consider the uh, the value in, in this proposition. Um, field of view, so uh, Jo Ferry and her team of photographers are, yep. are on board. So they've currently, or I suppose historically done a lot of um, 
photography for junior clubs, yeah. team photos and all those sort of things. But they're now actually doing a fair bit of work for us on a week across game the board, days, yeah. across the board, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, so Joe's always uh, obviously keen to help any other clubs out with yep. team photos or action shots. Um, first aid management and training. So um, Rob Parker and, and the team at First Aid Management uh, running all our first aid courses, yep. either here at the office or at uh, their office in Forest Hill. Um, so yeah, certainly there's been a, a great uptake of, uh, of courses there. So they're, they're uh, very happy with the initial um, jumping on board of that. And then Knox Private Hospital obviously is one that we've done a, a good deal with as well. So that's giving every player who occurs, uh, has, a, has a serious injury of some yep. sort to be able to get into the emergency department. And with a little bit of uh, help financially. financially. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a, a carrot there to, uh, to, I suppose, incur a little bit of expense to start with, but there's some rebates that come back into that if you go down the claim process, um, rather than potentially sitting there for four or five hours in pain yeah, exactly. at, a, at a, a public um, public hospital. And you can and you can find all that information on our website, the yep. Yep. Knox That's Private Hospital logo. That's click, all there. Click away there and you yep. can find out more about that. For sure. And then we've got a couple others that are, uh, we're working on at the moment. So uh, an exciting one for our uh, female participants yep. in, in the football and netball side of things. So Boob Armour. Um, we're hopefully going to be able to finalise a deal by the end of this week on, with them. And then another one, um, Loco Mobile, which is a, um, a company that are uh, offering a digital uh, data plans uh, for phones. Um, it's not just a SIM card, it's yeah. also data as well, um, of which there is a contribution that goes back to the club. So okay. you nominate your, your club. Um, each month that you are a subscriber to that plan, that your club will receive $4.50 per month yeah. ongoing while you're a subscriber. Um, so yeah, fantastic opportunity. And when you look at the numbers, you only have to have 100 yeah, people. people subscribe and there's probably another wow. major sponsor yeah, for you. Exactly, yeah. absolutely. So, so there's plenty of opportunities yeah. for clubs this year. And on a lighter note for easy, you know, yeah. obviously you're a massive fan of local sport, Foot, footy and netball being back. What are you most looking forward to about, you know, your Saturday afternoons? Hopefully the weather can stay sunny for a bit longer. What are you most looking forward to? Um, I think probably just seeing the smile on people's faces yeah. for now to see community sports back out there again. Um, you know, obviously the football, local football means a lot to the local community yeah. and them being deprived of that in 2020, um, it's really good. It's good to see even just with the practice matches, just the feedback that we've had so far has been fantastic in terms of people being able to get out there and enjoy their local sport again. So that's the one thing I'm really looking forward to being able to go there and see people enjoying their sport once again after a, a really challenging 2020. Absolutely, I couldn't put it a bit better myself, Freeze. And from all of us here at the Eastern Football Netball League, we thank you for sticking with us in 2020 and hopefully we can have a, a massive 2021. And of course, thank you to all our sponsors and uh, we'll see you at the footy and netball. See you later. I can't, 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 can't,